one. You are the owner of my soul. You are Alpha and Jamaica. You are worthy to be praised. In all generations, there is no one like you. Alpha and Omega, you are worthy to be praised. Thank you, Yahushua. You're the owner of my soul. You're Alpha and Omega. You are worthy to be praised. In all generations, there is no one like you. You all find your Omega, you are worthy to be praised. O mi mana rekene muna, O mi ma Yahushua ribo tito, O mi ma Yahuana rekene. Dear friends, good morning, Yahushua's guidance. I hope you're keeping well. So I'm going to be making a video we're going to be confabulating on is ignorance and excuse. Are human beings allowed to superimpose their own opinions, their ideas, their preferences over the creator's specific instructions? Are we allowed to change anything, his commands, his laws, his name, anything at all? We are not allowed to. We're going to be discussing all that, looking into all of that with proofs and scriptural details for the purpose of this exercise. Do not use the Bible. Use the scriptures because the Bible is the word of God. God is Satan. You need to use the scriptures. That is the word of Yahuwah. Your creator is Yahuwah. Y-A-H-U-A-H. -H. Okay? So use the ISR version, 1998 version. ISR stands for Institute of Scriptural Research. So whatever scriptural verse you want to find, you just add ISR to the end of it. John eleven thirty five ISR Yahushua wept, and you know John three sixteen ISR for Yahuwah so loved the world that he sent his son Yahushua, whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Okay, so we're gonna commence with a brief prayer. Eternal Father Yahuwah, I worship you, Elohim. I thank you, I adore you, I magnify you, I extol you, I revere you, I cherish you. Thank you for the dawn of a new day. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for your revelation. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your constant help. Thank you for your providence. Thank you for your inspirations. Thank you for the wisdom. Thank you for the knowledge. Thank you for the opportunities. Thank you for the priceless gift of your salvation, free and undeserved giving to us unmeritoriously. Forgive us for the many ways and times we have wronged you through our utterances, our words, deeds, commissions, omissions, actions, and inactions. In all the ways we've wronged you, forgive our sins, purge us with the holy blood of your son, Yahushua HaMashiach. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Make us wholesome in your sight. As we commence this exercise, I sanctify my utterances that it may be to your glory and for the salvation of souls. All this I ask in the mighty name of your son, Yahushua HaMashiach. Thank you. Okay, so like I always make a brief introduction. The title of our creator is not God. The title God and Lord are the titles of Baal, Beelzebul, and that is Satan. So you have to know this is the deception Satan has infused into mankind's thinking, usage, understanding, conception, all in fulfillment of the prophecies that we were forewarned about but little do we know that we are the victims of that prophecy and yet we are anticipating these prophecies are going to come in the future the title god is a teutonic word for all personal objects it's not the name of the creator it's a name it's a title for personal object is a title for all is a Teutonic word for all personal objects of personal worship of the heathen mythologies. Heathen means satanic, pagan, you know, of the heathen mythologies. You can get that in the Encyclopedia Britannica, 11th edition, 1911. So please do your research because if you feel you're too lazy, you don't have the time for your salvation, I don't know what else you, you have the time for. I don't know why you care about the comfort and the luxury of 
your health, your wealth, your life, your well-being, your family. If you don't care about your soul, your body is just like a winter jacket. It's an external covering that can only last maximum 100 years if you're lucky. So your soul will live forever. You are just, you know, on transit. So you have to make out time for your salvation. Daniel 12, 4 tells you that in the last days, people are going to diligently search and knowledge is going to increase. So if you do not feel out of the 24 hours of the day, one hour is too much for you to spare for your creator. 24 hours in a day, how many hours in a week, in a month, in a year, you can be bothered, but you can spend three hours, four hours at a cinema, watch series and all that. You are shooting yourself in the leg. Okay, so please don't be lazy. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world but loses his soul? That mentality, oh, if I don't know, what you don't know will not kill you. If I don't know, the creator is going to excuse me, exempt me. Ignorance is going to be an excuse. You are just literally shooting yourself in the leg. Ignorance is no excuse. If you don't know, you are still as guilty because for you not to know, it shows that you do not care about the creator. It shows that you do not, it's just like, even the laws in our country, you know, human beings, we are kind of self-absorbed. We are selfish. We want a lawful society. Mm -hmm. We want a society where there is law and order, where ignorance is no excuse. If somebody comes to your house, sets it on fire, kills you, kills your family, and says, oh, that they were drunk or they were having a mental disorder, you don't care. You just want to be compensated. You want justice. That it that that is the way it is with the creator. Ignorance is no excuse. So when you do not make out the time, when you do not give him the priority and the preference to know his laws, you are turning your back on his child. His child are his laws. The laws that he gives to mankind, his commandments are his son Yahushua Hamashiach. So that is why he said in Hosea 4 6, because you've forsaken my laws, I will also forsake your children. Because his laws are his child. The words he speaks are a person. That person is his son. So ignorance is no excuse. Like somebody coming and killing your child and saying, oh, I was ignorant. You don't care. Ignorance is no excuse. That is how it is with the creator. So please do yourself the favor. Be abreast with the expectations of the creator, with the laws that he's giving to you. Because you do not stand a chance if you do not know. Okay? So we're going to be deliberating on some scriptural verses, you know, proofs that ignorance is no excuse from the beginning. Beginning is Bereshit. Bereshit is Genesis, but it's been Hellenized today to be Genesis. Everything in the scriptures have virtually been changed. And that is all in fulfillment of Daniel 7.25. Satan cannot do anything without the permission of the creator. So whatever he does, whatever changes it makes, whatever fallacy he puts forward, whatever deception he puts mankind through, it is because the creator has allowed him to do that. As you can see in Deuteronomy 13. Okay, but he, the creator has told us, he has forewarned us in advance that he's testing us. So you have to prove yourself worthy. It's like if you want to go to a country, maybe you want to go to the UK, to France, to this place. You want to get a job. You want something of value to you. You have to prove that you're worthy of it. So he's going to test you. Okay, when you go to the embassy, there are criteria for you to follow, to fill out. You must abide by them to prove that you are, you know, worthy of the opportunity. That is the way it is with the creator. If you do not prove yourself worthy, you discount yourself and you also discount your generations unborn. It's a chain reaction. Okay. So in the beginning, we had Hawa, which has been changed to Eve today. Hawa, because there is no letter V in the Hebraic scriptures. So her name could not have been Eve. His name could not have been Jehovah. His name could not have been Jesus. There is no letter J. There is no letter V. So all these changes, they were Hellenized in fulfillment of Daniel 7.25, which tells you that the Satan is going to blaspheme against the Most High and the people and against the people in heaven and the people of the Most High are going to be handed over to Satan for a time, times and half a time. So all these changes are in fulfillment of those prophecies. The days of the week, when you're praying, you're, first of all, the God you're praying to, the title God is Satan. So when you're saying you're handing over your Monday to God, God is Satan. The Monday you're praying for Monday is a day that has been named after a satanic deity, the moon god. Tuesday after the two god, T-I-W. Wednesday after God, Woden's Day. Thursday after the god of thunder, Thor. 
Friday, Friday's day, Saturday, Saturn's day, Sunday after the sun god. So this is all in fulfillment of Daniel 7.25. Everything has been changed. Every name in the scriptures, they have been changed. But those names are inconsequential. What matters the most is the name of our creator and the name of Messiah, Yahushua HaMashiach. Because Romans 10, 13 tells you, whoever calls upon the name of Yahuwah shall be saved. Acts 4, 12 tells you, no other name has been given to mankind by which we must be saved except the name Yahushua HaMashiach. So that tells you the name is inexpendable, is indispensable. You cannot change it. You cannot superimpose anything over it. Okay, so the Creator has told us in Deuteronomy 12, 32, that we are not allowed to make any changes. He gave us our brains. What are you changing? What is it you know you're changing? It's like you have a newborn baby. Before the baby does anything, you already know. You know everything. This is a human being that you did not create, but you have more experience over. But this is our Creator. He gave us our brains. It's like when He looks at us, He sees through us. It's like an X-ray vision. So what is it you know you're changing? He told us, Deuteronomy 12, 32, see that you observe all that I command you. Do not add to it. Do not take away from it. Do not superimpose your opinions, your thoughts, your preferences over whatever he has said to you. Because he is the beginning from the end. That is why his name is Yahuwah. Yahuwah means self-existent. He that was, that is, and is to come self-existent will continue to exist so he was existing before time began what is it you know that you are changing how can you give the person you worship a name be believing you can give the person you worship the name is believing you can give the person you worship power because the power of every deity lies in its name so human beings changing the name of the messiah yahushua hamashiach replacing it with a man-made deity jesus christ is idolatry because anything you are superimposing over anything you are pu you know putting or initiating whatever those ideas you don't know the spirits that inspires those ideas in your mind it can only be satan because satan is the only enemy of the creator and the only way he can steal the worship meant for the creator is by initiating a new name how can he initiate it? his spirit he works through human beings putting the ideas in your head that is why the Creator told you, Deuteronomy 12, 32, do not add to anything I tell you, do not take away from it. Obey strictly. Obey strictly. He's, he's, you know, he's, he's really irritating. It's like you tell your little child, don't do this, don't do this, because you've, you've already done everything. You cook a meal, you've, you know how everything, you've cooked it from the beginning, you went shopping, you've cooked it. Then you serve your child, she starts adding water adding onions, adding pepper. What are you doing? You're messing everything up. That is how it is with the creator because he can see the consequences from the beginning. So he's told us, do not add, do not take away. The Deuteronomy 12, 32, we do not have the authorization to make any manipulations, any preferences, any changes, any superimpositions. You can worship the creator in any languages, but you cannot change his name. You cannot change his laws. Okay, so ignorance is no excuse. We're going to be looking at the, you know, so many instances and examples proving that in the beginning we had Adam and Hawa, Eve, right? Now, in Genesis 3, Eve ate of the forbidden fruit. That fruit was not a bad tree because everything the creator made in Genesis 1, 26, he told us he looked at everything he made. He saw that it was good. He put man in dominion over it, but he told man, do not touch this tree. Do not eat of this tree use everything else you have authority of everything else, over everything else but the day you eat of this tree you shall die okay so that tree was not a bad tree but they did not have the permission to eat from it because everything the creator made was good now if ate of the tree that you know act of eating of the tree was an act of disobedience and disobedience is what is saying that is what is saying you know i was having a, a confabulation with a muslim friend and you know he was saying um um he was kind of criticizing the bible that was when i was a christian and so i was defending the bible and he was saying that in the old testament we had abominations you know people sleeping with each other and you know families and all that and people killing people murdering i told him what is saying is whatever the creator tells you not to do okay that is what is saying when the creator tells you pick up your sword and kill be sure to pick up your sword and kill because you what is saying is you disobeying is you disobeying his command so if he tells you 
the Israelites were allowed to murder their enemies, the Amalekites, the Hellenites, the, all these people. They were allowed to kill, but now the laws have changed. He's told us, thou shall not kill. Under no circumstances should ye be allowed to kill. Why? To separate the people of Yahuwah, the Creator, from the followers of the anti-messiah from the followers of satan in the last days revelation 13 tells you that satan is going to be allowed to make war with the kedoshim the kedoshim are the people of yahuwah the yahuda and it's going to be given power to overcome them so that is the only way the people of yahuwah are going to go home to heaven okay so you should actually pray that you are slain and persecuted and you killed so you go home because you staying on this earth there is no other way you can depart every every apostle of yahushua died through persecution and that was their it's like a visa to heaven so that visa is you sacrificing your life you said it's an honor count yourself blessed sorry not blessed count yourself favored when you are persecuted for my sake when you are you know killed for my sake he who is not willing to lay down his life for me is not worthy to be my disciple he said that in the book of john so clearly we can see that is going to that is the reason the law of murder was abolished to separate the people of yahuwah from the people of satan okay so this is um bear with me a moment let me just find the scriptures for you so that that is what sin is anything the creator tells you you must do don't use your own initiative telling him oh you shouldn't kill it's not fair to kill deuteronomy 13 he said reject the false prophet do not just anybody and that was where he gave us the that was the reason why they killed the Messiah Yahushua Hamashiach because the people, the Israelites were the chosen ones and they had that law that anybody who comes claiming to be the creator, claiming to be equal with the creator, you must kill. Deuteronomy 13 tells you that. So that was the reason why they killed the Messiah Yahushua, believing that they were obeying Yahuwah the creator, not realizing they were not paying attention to all the scriptures because in Isaiah 9, 6, the creator told them that he will be sending his son. He's going to be sending a mighty counselor, a mighty Yahuwah, his son, to come and deliver the people. Isaiah 9, 6, Isaiah 7, 14, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. So they were not paying attention to what they were paying more attention to Deuteronomy 13 to fulfill that. So when the Messiah Yahushua came and told them, look, I am the Messiah. And they said, you know, we do not stone you for your good works, but for you, a mere man claiming to be equal with Yahuwah, the creator, for that we shall kill you. Okay, so that was what they were paying attention to. And this is what the mess, um, the um the, the the scriptures are about whatever the creator tells you you must do deuteronomy 13 he says reject the false prophet and also kill him not only should you kill him but you should gather your family your relatives and also in you know partake in the murder of the falseness of the false prophet otherwise you will be guilty of idolatry and yahuwah's wrath will be upon you okay so this is how the creator is whatever he tells you you must do you have to pay attention you have to make you have to make his laws, his precepts. That is why he says in Psalm 1, favored is he who delights in the way of Yahuwah. You have to make his laws your delight. You have to make it your duty to know. You have to make it your concern, your obligation. That is why Satan has introduced the academic system, made us so emerged and submerged in other things to distract us from our creator and his laws that is why human beings are ignorant of even the creator's name we are so busy from as soon as a child is born from kindergarten to nursery from nursery to pr primary elementary to high school to college to higher institution uni and phd and doctorate and it just goes on and on on and on ambitions ambitions things to distract us we do not care to know Yahuwah's laws, Yahuwah's precepts. And that is how Satan managed to distract us so much that we do not even know the name of our creator today. We do not even know the name of our Messiah who laid down his life for us through whom our salvation is guaranteed only by his name. John 3, 18, whoever does not believe is condemned already because they have not believed in the name of of the only son of Yahuwah, the creator. And that name, Satan, has changed. And people are equating Jesus, the son of Satan, with Messiah Yahushua, believing they are the same person. They are not. Because Messiah Yahushua told us in Matthew 24, 3 to 5, when they asked him, how will Satan manifest himself in the last days? See that no one leads you astray, for many will come in my name, claiming I am the Messiah. Out of all the religions in the world, only Jesus claims to be the lamb. 
for us, he has never been born. Only Jesus claims to be the lamb that was slain, the lamb of the creator, Yahuwah, for us, he's never been born. The Messiah told us when his name is changed, know that it is Satan at work. Luke 21, 8, many will come in my name. Not just his name as a, as a son, but because he did the Holy Trinity, they are one. The name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Spirit. That is why he said many will come in my name. So the name of the Father has been changed to God. That is also what he was talking about because he told us that he is one with the Father. Many will come in my name. The name of the Son has been changed. The name of the Holy Spirit has also been stolen because the Muslims, which is the largest, you know, highest growing religion today, they believe that Muhammad is the helper promise. They don't realize the helper promise is the Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit is one with the creator. So help, so Muhammad technically claimed to be the creator on earth by claiming to be the helper promise. So this is what Messiah Yahushua forewarned us about. Luke 21, 8, many will come in my name. Matthew 24, 3 to 5. That, that, that is what has happened. Daniel 7, 25, Satan will steal the identity of the Most High and will change the set times and laws and the people of the Most High will be given over to him for a time, times and half a time. Okay, so this is what is happening and ignorance is no excuse. Ignorance is no excuse. That is why in the olden days, in the time of Messiah Yehushua, even though they fell victim to the prophecies and killed the Messiah, which was also in fulfillment of the Creator's self plan for salvation, because if he wasn't killed, his blood would not have been used to purge us of, uh, of the original sin, the curse on Adam on Adam and Eve in Genesis 3. So it was pertinent that he, that he had to be slain. But this generation, in the time of Messiah Yahushua, they were attentive to the scriptures. Their only desire was to go to heaven. For thousands of years, they were waiting for the Messiah to come. You can read Isaiah 53. You will hear how he was lamenting, praying and eagerly waiting agog with enthusiasm for the Messiah to come. Okay, they didn't have any educational system. Very few people were educated, like St. Paul, few people, Matthew, they were lawyers and all that. But most of them were illiterate. Their only desire was the creator, was the Messiah, was heaven, was salvation. Now, education is good, but Satan has used it to distract us so much, such that even in our supposed education, knowing too much of human knowledge, we have forsaken the knowledge of our creator, the knowledge of our salvation, the knowledge and the guarantee of our eternity. What shall it profit us? You get your doctorate, your PhD, you lose your soul, you lose everything. This is all what Satan has done. And then he's put so many economic problems, political problems. People struggle from kindergarten, nursery, high school, elementary, college. You eventually come out, you graduate, there is no work. And then you have to go through all the politics of getting a job. And then all this, all this is so much distraction to make us submerged in confusion in ignorance but that ignorance is no excuse okay for instance in the beginning genesis 3 when eve ate of the forbidden fruit she was the second creator the second human human being created right so probably when adam was created yahuwah had a conversation with adam gave him all the laws now adam had a duty to pass those laws on to eve onto his wife hawa Maybe he did, maybe he didn't, maybe he did and he didn't emphatically hammer it into her ears how to be stringent in obedience and all that. He went away wandering wherever. The serpent came to Eve and she submitted the obedience meant for the creator to the serpent. The serpent told her, you eat of this fruit, your eyes will be open, you will live forever. And Sorry, your eyes will be open and you will have wisdom and knowledge and all that. She did not know the consequences. That is Satan for you. He wraps his lies in truth. Her eyes open quite all right, but did she know the consequences that is going to be to her generations and born? For all eternity, all her descendants will be cursed because ignorance is no excuse. Even though we are the descendants of Eve, we are the children of Adam and Eve. We were not there in the Garden of Eden, but we have been inflicted with that curse because that curse in, Gen in Genesis chapter 3, if you read it, that for all eternity, the children of Eve, that is why we have birth pains, women having going through hard labor, the man having to till, even though women also till with the men today, you know, breadwinning and all that. And then it's, 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 a, it's a chain reaction. So it's for all eternity. Human beings were not designed to die. Human beings were not designed to suffer. So that ignorance by Eve, that was a consequence that was 
to affect all her generations unborn, not just to the third and fourth generations for all eternity, telling you that ignorance is no excuse. She must have apologized. She must have been so sorry. She didn't mean to. She she must have been so ignorant. And to show you how ignorant she was, when she got of the uh, um, of the forbidden fruit, she didn't just eat it alone out of greed or selfishness. She shared it with Adam, right? And Adam ate without asking questions. You know, that's men. When you eat from your woman, you don't ask questions. You were just get, keep keeping yourself liable for, you know, consequences you do not know. That aside, though. So that was a chain reaction that occurred and affected all the generations unborn. Because the, the ignorance of Adam not asking questions, where is this fruit from Eve? That ignorance was no excuse for Adam. That ignorance was no excuse for Eve. And that ignorance is no excuse for us. We are the descendants of Adam and Eve. And we are suffering the repercussions. Yahuwah is merciful. But Satan knows the laws of Yahuwah. That in Ezekiel 18, for the soul that sin shall die. When he says that the soul that, sh that sin shall die in Romans 6.23 as well, it does not refer to the physical death. You have to understand that the physical death that we have today, this is not death. This is falling asleep. That is why when you read the book of Lazarus, in the book of John chapter 11, John is Yahukan, and if you read the scriptures, but it's been hella nice to John today. When Lazarus died and Yahushua was in a distant town, away, far away, he knew, being Yahuwah himself, that Lazarus had died, even though he was far away. Distance is no barrier. So he told his disciples, Lazarus is asleep, I go to wake him. Lazarus had died, but this is what the scriptures refers to as what we call death. Our human death is scripturally called falling asleep. That is the scriptural you know, reference for it. So when the disciples were asking him, if Lazarus is falling, has fallen asleep, why do you have to bother? He's going to wake up. He's just taking a nap or resting. He said, Lazarus is dead. He told them literally. So when the scriptures say the soul that sin shall die, that is eternal damnation is referring to. Okay? That is what Satan knew. Satan used to be an angel in heaven. So he knows all the laws of Yahuwah, that the consequences of sin is death it doesn't mean yahuwah is not merciful it doesn't mean he's so mean he doesn't forgive he's forgiving you but it's a chain reaction it's like it's like i just imagine it to be like a whole factory once a button is pressed a chain reaction of all the devices start working start working the person may have pressed it by mistake but it doesn't change the effect of anything okay so that is how it is lucifer knew all those things and lucifer used to be an angel and his mission was to destroy mankind for all eternity so that mankind will start dying that death is eternal damnation so that mankind will be condemned to eternal damnation that is why human beings could not access heaven after death anybody who died they were stuck in their graves they could not go to heaven if they were sinful they would go straight to hell but if they lived holy like king david Abraham, Moses, all these people, they were stuck in their graves waiting for the Messiah to come, to pay for the sins of Adam and Eve. Because Isaiah 59 2 tells us that our sins have separated us from Yahuwah, our creator. Okay, so they were stuck. Isaiah 53, if you read it, you're going to see how they were praying and craving for the Messiah to be born, to come, to liberate the people. That the punishment meant for us was placed upon him by his tribes. We are healed and he's going to liberate us and all that. That is why as soon as Messiah Yahushua died on the cross, Matthew 27, 52, the graves of the long dead saints arose. They were opened and they arose from their graves and they were seen in the cities. Okay, that is the consequence of sin. The chain reaction, human beings were separated, were alienated from accessing heaven. No matter how hard they tried, that curse of origin, even if, even if they never committed a sin, but spiritually they're already inflicted with a curse, with a generational curse, such that every newborn baby, as soon as they are born, so long as they're descendants of Adam and Hawa, of Adam and Eve, they are already guilty of eternal damnation. That was the plan of Satan. And that is why Yahuwah had to send his son to come liberate us. Because Ezekiel 18.20 tells you no human being can pay for the sins of another person. So that is why Yahushua had to come. Because he is not a human being. He is Yahuwah. He is one with the father Yahuwah. And so Yahuwah had to send his son Yahushua to come and deliver us. Okay, that is why John 3, 16 tells you, For Yahuwah so loved the world that he sent his only son Yahushua, who whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Okay, so this is a chain reaction. 
people were stuck people were separated human beings had no way forward he had to send his son to come pay ezekiel 18 20 no human can pay for another person until that price was paid human beings could not have, have access to heaven so that is another that is one proof in genesis chapter 3 that ignorance is no excuse ignorance still makes you liable for the consequences for the chain reaction to the third and fourth generations unborn exodus chapter 20 verse 4 tells you that whoever disobeys the commandment of yahuwah that he visits the punishment to the third and fourth generations unborn okay so if you um read um the book of Leviticus chapter 10. Leviticus in the scriptures is called Wayikra, but it's been Hellenized in Leviticus today. Okay, you're going to see about the two sons of Aaron, how they were stricken to death. Why? They were under the influence of alcohol, not totally drunk because they were in the sanctuary, the Holy of Holies. You have to know, sorry, excuse me. <coughs> excuse me, sorry, I just had some salad. In Numbers chapter 3, verse 10, Numbers 18, 7, Moses was sent by Yahuwah to go appoint his elder brother Aaron and told, and Yahuwah told Moses to tell Aaron that him and his sons, him and his descendants will be responsible for priesthood. Only then that anyone else who comes close will be stricken to death. Okay? So only the two, only the sons of Aaron had access to priesthood. They were the ones in charge of the Holy of Holies. Now, whilst they were there, they did not intend to worship any other idols. They intended to worship Yahuwah, just like Eve did not intend to worship the serpent in the Garden of Eden. She just ate of the forbidden fruit, but that transfer of Yahuwah's obedience to the serpent is, was considered idolatry, condemning her for eternal damnation to her, gener to her generations and descendants unborn. The same in, in Leviticus chapter 10. The two sons of Aaron, they were they had taken a bit of fermented drink or alcohol. So they were not totally drunk because they were, you know, performing their priestly service, their priestly duty. Now, they went and ignited incense unauthorized without the permission of Yahuwah the Creator. You have to know that the Holy of Holies was a very serious business when the temple was on earth because the temple of Yahuwah is no longer on earth. There is no altar of Yahuwah on earth. Hebrews 9.24 tells you that Yahushua entered the original temple in heaven where he performs his priestly duties for the atonement of mankind's sins, for all those that call upon his name. Okay, So the Holy of Holies was a very serious business such that the priest could only enter it once in a year. So once in a year, people would bring their animals. That is the only time they get to have a confession, to have their sins expiated, to get atonement for their sins. So whatever sins you've, it's like you have to just write a book of all your sins all year. So when the time comes, you just bring an animal, a ram, a goat, place your hands upon it, and then confess your sins upon that animal symbolically the animal carries your sins the animal becomes the sacrifice liable for your sins and that animal is slain and offered and you are free because your sins have been transferred that is why messiah yahushua was the sacrifice the lamb of the creator which jesus is claiming to be but he is the false lamb prophesied about in revelation 13 11 and that be you know when the animal is carrying all the saints that is also why yahushua was carrying all the saints on the cross and his father had to turn his back on him because he was carrying all the filth and iniquities of mankind so that was why he cried out elohim eli eli why have you forsaken me because his father turned his back on him okay so that was the priestly duty the priest had to offer atonement for the sins of the people in the case of yahushua he is the priest and he is the sacrifice so he's everything you can't do without him muslims rejecting him anybody christians rejecting him he atheists heathens whatever you are doing yourself a disservice you might as well just literally take a walk into hell because that is what you're doing without Yahu yahushua you cannot come to the father john 14 6 no one comes to the father except through yahushua you can go through the mother of yahushua you can go through angels you can go through saints only him enters the temple in heaven hebrews 9 24 no other person has access to it okay and no one can access the father except through the son not just because he's the son but because he's the priest all right so now the priest of aaron back to course they were in the holy of holies and they ignited incense when yahuwah had not authorized it unauthorized worship condemns you to eternal damnation 
now for that singular act they did that because they were under the influence of alcohol they were not, they were not totally drunk but maybe tipsy intoxicated yahuwah sent fire from heaven to consume the animal sacrifice and to consume the two sons of aaron right before their father's eyes aaron is the high priest his two sons were consumed just like any goat or rams they were consumed immediately and Aaron could not say a word because he is dealing with the creator. The creator sees his heart content. He didn't even have the luxury of bearing a grudge or being angry or anything. He couldn't say anything. And Moses came to Aaron. Moses is the younger brother of Aaron, but he was the chosen prophet. Moses came to Aaron and told him in Leviticus 10 that this is what Yahuwah said, that amongst his people he will be proven holy, that this is the very last time any priest of his will ever take alcohol in the course of their priestly duties. So the priest of today, that also disqualifies them. That tells you clearly they are priests of God. They are not priests of Yahuwah because God is Satan. That is why they can be taking wine, claiming they are converting bread and wine, in the course of their priestly duties and they are not stricken to death because the altar they are at is not the altar of yahuwah the altar of yahuwah is in heaven hebrews 9 24 so yahuwah has no business with whatever is happening in the church the church is coined from the word seke seke is the daughter of helios the sunday eating so the church is the house of helios the sunday to the house of the daughter of the sunday eating seke so everything is satanic in fulfillment of revelations 13 8 all inhabitants of the earth will worship satan this is all the you know everything that was prophesied now the sons of aaron did not intend to worship an idol they did not intend to offend yahuwah but was their ignorance an excuse no now do you imagine that after yahuwah sent fire to consume them from heaven that they would actually go to heaven do you really think that you know their souls will be accepted into heaven because they were treated like an abomination on earth i don't imagine they would go to heaven so they were condemned to eternal damnation on earth and after death so telling you unauthorized worship in the name of god in the name of jesus in the name of mary in the name of angels in the name of saints in any form shape or title is unauthorized is unacceptable to yahuwah that's makes you liable for eternal condemnation. Yahuwah takes it seriously and he told us clearly that be careful to observe all that I command you. Do not add to it. Do not take away from it. Okay? If you read the book of Isaiah 52 verses, um, bear with me, Isaiah 52, 5 to 6. Okay? You're going to see what Yahuwah told us. These are all prophecies foretold in advance but we are not paying attention and that it, and we have just discounted ourselves we have just dis done ourselves a, a, a disservice okay so if you read isaiah 52 verse 6 yahuwah told us and now what do i have here it declares yahuwah for my people have been taken away for nothing and those who rule them mock declares yahuwah and all day long, my name is constantly blasphemed. All day long, my name is constantly forgotten. Therefore, my people will know my name. Therefore, in that day, they will know that it is I who foretold it. Yes, it is I. They will know that it is I who is speaking to them. So this is all in fulfillment of the prophecies. We can see all these things are happening today. Every single day, Yahuwah's name is continually forsaken, is continually blasphemed, is continually set aside. We ignore his name. We do not even acknowledge his name. Just relegate him to the background. We forget his name. The only time people utter the name of Yahuwah is when? When they are actually using it in vain. When people say, yeah, that is the name of Yahuwah. That is why we say hallelujah. He's, the short form of his name is Yah, Y-A-H. Even though the spelling is different, but it's the same pronunciation, okay? That is the name. That is how we take his name for granted. When people say, hey, that is the name of Yahuwah. Yahuwah's name is, if you check on um, YouTube, you're going to see the, the Hebraic scriptures. You're going to see that his name has hey, Yah, and um, something else. I, I can't really remember it now. It's somewhere on my YouTube but when you say hey that is his name is broken into like syllables hey and yeah and another one people say this often they just say hey how are you 
they don't realize it ignorance is no excuse yeah that is his name that is why we say hallelujah ignorance is no excuse isaiah 52 6 tells you his name will be continually every single day forgotten using in vain blasphemed set aside you know brought to naught and that is what is happening today okay now you can see that ignorance was no excuse for the sons of aaron even though they did not have an intention to engage in idolatry to offer unauthorized worship to worship any idols but their actions were just as guilty as their you know they, their, their actions just made them as guilty as any anybody who had the intentions so your actions matter so if you're calling upon the name god and saying it doesn't matter all that matters is your heart's content no your heart's content is not all that matters your actions matter it's like you're driving on the road you hit somebody with a car you didn't intend to but your action makes you guilty your actions and your intentions must be clear that is why in the book of psalms which is still healing me tells you search me through and through and know me yahuwah you you know you have you have to be pure you, he sees through you he's like an extra vision so you can't just tell him look on the outside how can he look on the outside he sees through you he sees everything your end your beginning your intestines your system your brain your mind your heart your actions everything must be in synchronization with yahuwah's laws see that you do not ask it that you do not take away ignorance is no excuse okay now also if you read the book of first kings chapter 13 that was the like i was so sad for that prophet the prophet was sent by yahuwah to go deliver a message and yahuwah told him when you get there do not eat from the person i'm sending you to do not eat anything okay now when the prophet arrived to the place they offered him food the I'm just I'm just gonna read it. There's no point, you know, having a rough guess. First Kings thirteen. Okay? So we can read it together and understand that ignorance is no excuse. Like the man was literally innocent, he had no negative intentions, his you know, his heart was pure. Okay. Okay, so first kings 13 by the word of yahuwah a man of yahuwah came from judah to bethel as jeroboam was standing by the altar to make an offering by the word of yahuwah he cried out against the altar 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 this is what yahuwah says a son named josiah will be born to the house of david on you he will sacrifice the priest of the high places who make offerings here and human bones will be burned on you that same day, the man of Yahuwah gave a sign. This is the sign Yahuwah has declared. The altar will be split apart and the ashes on it will be poured out. When King Jeroboam heard what the man of Yahuwah cried out against the altar at Bethel. So it was like the man was sent by Yahuwah to come and place a curse on King Jeroboam's town. Okay, so when King Jeroboam heard what the man of Yahuwah cried out against the altar at Bethel, he stretched out his hand from the altar and said, Seize him! But the hand he stretched out toward the man shriveled up. It's like he just dried up like dried leaf so that he could not pull it back. Also, the altar was split apart, just like just like the man prophesied, the man of Yahuwah. Also, the altar was, was split apart and these ashes poured out according to the sign given by the man of Yahuwah, by the word of Yahuwah. So everything the man of Yahuwah said came to pass. He delivered the message, okay, the signs, everything, the manifestations occurred. Then the king said to the man of Yahuwah, intercede, you know, plead on our behalf, intercede with Yahuwah, your, your almighty, and pray for me that my hand may be restored. So the man of Yahuwah interceded with Yahuwah, and the king's hand was restored and became as it was before. You know, he had mercy upon him and he got healed. The king said to the man of Yahuwah, come home with me for a meal and I will give you a gift, you know, to appreciate him. But see, the heart of man is desperately wicked. You know, he just destroyed the king's temple. Even though he healed the king, you don't know the king's intentions anyways. But the man of Yahuwah answered the king, even if you were to give me half your possessions, I would not go with you, nor would I eat bread. The word, no, no, nor would I eat bread or drink water here. For I was commanded by the word of Yahuwah, you must not eat bread or drink water or return by the way you came. Okay, so Yahuwah strictly told him, do not eat, do not drink, and do not, you know, return, go the same way you came. You have to follow another route. So he took another road and did not return by the way he had come to Bethel, just as Yahuwah commanded him. 
Now there was a certain old prophet living in Bethel whose sons came and told him all that the man of Yahuwah had done there that day. They also told their father what he had said to the king. Their father asked them, which way did he go? And his sons showed him which road the man of Yahuwah from Judah had taken. So he said to his sons, saddle the donkey for me. And when they had saddled the donkey for him, he mounted it and rode after the man of Yahuwah. He found him sitting under an oak tree and asked him, Are you the man of Yahuwah who came from Judah? Because maybe they all look alike. And he replied, Yes, I am. So the prophet said to him, Come home with me and eat. The man of Yahuwah said, I cannot turn back and go with you, nor can I eat bread or drink water with you in this place. So he's still insisting on what Yahuwah told him. He was being obedient. I have been told by the word of Yahuwah, you must not eat bread or drink water there or return by the way you came. Now the old prophet answered, I too am a prophet as you are. And an angel said to me by the word of Yahuwah, bring him back with you to your house so that he may eat bread and drink water. But he was lying to him. Okay, he told him that he is also a prophet and an angel came to him and told him that he's now allowed to eat and come and drink. So he believed on the, you know, understanding that it was Yahuwah's instruction from an angel. But the prophet was lying to him. So the man of Yahuwah returned with him and ate and drank in his house. While they were sitting at the table, the word of Yahuwah came to the old prophet, the one that lied. The word of Yahuwah came to him, to the old prophet who had brought him back. He cried out to the man of Yahuwah who had come from Judah. This is what Yahuwah says. You have defied the word of Yahuwah and you have not kept the command the, the almighty Yahuwah gave him. You came back and you ate bread and drank water in the place where Yahuwah told you not to eat or drink. Therefore, your body will not be buried in the tomb of your ancestors because that's like a thing of glory. All the ancestors have to be buried in one place. The, the, the curse from Yahuwah for, as a punishment now is that his body will not be buried. And what else after that? When the man of Yahuwah had finished eating and drinking, the prophet who had brought him back saddled his donkey for him. As he went on his way, a lion met him on the road and killed him. And his body was left lying on the road with both the donkey and the lion standing beside it. Some people who passed by saw the body lying there with the lion standing beside the body. Not only did the lion eat it, the lion was still standing for the people to see. And they went and reported it in the city where the old prophet lived. When the prophet who had brought him back from his journey heard of it, the same prophet who lied and deceived him, he said, it is the man of Yahuwah who defied the word of Yahuwah. Yahuwah has given him over to the lion, which has mauled him and killed him as the word of Yahuwah had forewarned him. Okay, so the prophet said to his son, saddle the donkey for me, and they did so. Then he went out and found the body lying on the road with the donkey and the lion standing beside it. The lion had neither eaten the body nor mauled the donkey. So the prophet picked up the body of the man of Yahuwah, laid it on the donkey and brought it back to his own city to mourn for him and bury him. Then he laid the body in his own tomb and they mourned over him and said, alas, my brother. After burying him, he said to his sons, When I die, bury me in the grave where the man of Yahuwah is buried. Lay my bones beside his bones. For the message he declared by the word of Yahuwah against the altar in Bethel and against all the shrines and the, on, and the high, on the high places in the towns of Samaria will certainly come true. Even after this, Jeroboam did not change his evil ways, but once more appointed priests for the high places from all sorts of people. Anyone who wanted to become a priest, he consecrated for the high places. This was the sign of the house of Jeroboam that led to his downfall and to his destruction from the face of the earth. So you can see that the man of Yahuwah, his ignorance was no excuse, even though he was deceived, even though he was trying so hard to be faithful, even though he believed and, you know, disobeyed Yahuwah on the understanding that he was obeying Yahuwah's instructions from an angel, but his ignorance was no excuse. Still, he had to pay with his life and in a most shameful way, a lion devoured him, okay? And if he died in disobedience, I don't imagine he would have gone to heaven afterwards. Okay, so you can see that it tells you also about 
at the last verse is even after this jeroboam did not change his evil ways but once more appointed priests for for the high places from all sorts of people because yahuwah's laws in numbers 18 7 and numbers 3 10 tells you that only aaron and his priests and his sons are allowed to put to, to be priests to yahuwah so jeroboam was appointing priests from all sorts of people you can see it's not just today that we started having false priests people be you know getting getting into priesthood by human appointment just like we have today all these priests they are not priests of yahuwah priesthood to yahuwah is only by birth not by human appointment or human ordination you have to be appointed by yahuwah you have to be a descendant of aaron and no descendants of aaron are existing on the earth because yahuwah abolished and wiped from the surface of the earth all the tribes of israel sparing just the tribe of judah now the sons of aaron we are the levites the levites were responsible for priesthood now all the levites all the other tribes reuben simeon levi judah issachar zebulun dan naphtali gad asher joseph benjamin these are the 12 tribes all the other 11 were wiped away in second king 17 to 19 it tells you that because of their iniquity sparing just the tribe of judah so technically there are no more levites and there should be no more priests because yahushua is the only priest of yahuwah almighty and he was appointed a priest the day he became a son from being an angel in hebrews chapter 1 to be a priest forever as of the order of melchizedek so you can see that ignorance is no excuse okay this is also why Yahuwah takes it very seriously. His priesthood is very important. It can only be by breath, not by human appointment. Okay, and also his Sabbath is very important to him. That is why he says in Ezekiel 22 verse 26 that, you know, about the false priest and how they desecrate Yahuwah's ways. Because if you are not appointed by yahuwah clearly you cannot serve him as a priest whatever you're doing is a sacrilege unto him and unto your soul that is why in ezekiel 22 verse 26 it tells us clearly and that is what is happening today her priests have violated my laws and profaned my holy things they have not distinguished between the holy and the unholy nor have they made known the difference between the clean and the unclean and they have hidden their ways from my sabbaths so that i am profaned among them that is what is happening today the priests we have today are priests of satan because they are priests of god and god is satan they desecrate the sabbath because yahuwah's sabbath is not sunday sunday is in honor of the sun deity the daughter of of helios is is the sun god and that and, and you know the church is named after the daughter of helios seke and then her father is helios the sun deity and that is the day that christians worship on sunday you can see that this is all in fulfillment of the prophecies this is all satan deceiving people just as prophesied in revelations 13 14 that is going to deceive the whole world with a science he's allowed allowed to perform so satan can only work his deceptions and false miracles with the permission of Yahuwah. But Yahuwah has given human beings free will. Yahuwah is such a gentle person, like I would say like a gentleman because Yahushua was a man. But even though he's Yahuwah, he's not man, right? It's just an analogy. He would not force himself on anybody. He respects our free will, okay? And Satan is also mandated to respect our free will, even though he's a holy God and a vagabond, right? satan cannot force you to worship him he can only deceive he can only manipulate he can only scam you if you give him attention if you listen to him if you allow him to mislead you okay satan cannot force himself otherwise you'll be ro roaming the streets physically but he doesn't have that authorization he can own his spirit and can only operate through a body that allows him permission to Okay, that is what um, it tells you, Revelation 13, 14. He deceived people with the signs he's allowed to perform. The signs you allow him to perform through you. The signs that the, the inhabitants of the earth allow him to perform through them. Revelation 13, 8. All inhabitants of the earth will worship Satan. Okay, another proof that ignorance is no excuse. King Saul, in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 15, we can see that King Saul was the favorite king of Yahuwah, all right? Yahuwah used to, he was so fierce, the, everybody feared him. Like, he's like, um, he's like a very powerful city, just like people envy America, UK, big countries. That is how the Israelites were. 
they were more than that. They were the people of these are people who were marched through the Red Sea. Imagine the Red Sea, big ocean parted. They walked through the bottom of the sea and they had a pathway. Imagine how people used to look at them. The whole world used to envy them. These are the special people of the special Yahuwah. So they were special and priceless because they were not allowed to intermarry with heathens. So there is no way other people could even become you know partakers of Israelites' favor with Yahuwah. So they were just like Yahuwah's people. That is why he says a holy nation, a people set apart, all right? So they were like envied by everybody. They go to battles, Yahuwah is with them. They strike, they kill, they maim. They, they just had the strength and zeal of giants, all right? So this is how yeah, Yahuwah's favor was upon them and nobody could overcome them. Now, but in Samuel 15, King Saul lost the favor of Yahuwah. Why? Because he superimposed his own idea over Yahuwah's specific instructions. And his ignorance was not a, was was not an excuse to save him, was not a saving excuse. Okay, so even though he did not mean to, he even though he meant well, even though he had no harmful intentions, but his ignorance was not an excuse. Okay. So we had um um what do you call it? the amalekites they were a heathen nation and yahuwah gave a clear instruction succinctly go to that nation and wipe out every living thing that is why i told you sin is disobedience sin is not what you think it is if yahuwah tells you wipe out everything kill women kill children kill animals kill everything he does not want to see anything breathing on that land okay now king saul um went Samuel gave his instruction to King Saul because the prophet is higher than the king because the prophet appoints the king. Samuel was the prophet of Yahuwah. And Samuel came and gave the instruction to, 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 to King Saul and told him, go make war with this hidden nation. Take everything, kill everything. That is Yahuwah's instruction. Okay? Now, so, so Saul went there and he spared the king of the Amalekites, Gilgal, and he spared the livestock. Why? Because, like I said, periodically you have to offer animals and goats and all that. So he spared the livestock in the hope that he could use it to offer sacrifices to Yahuwah for the atonement of sins. You know, maybe they maybe they were short of livestock or you know he thought why waste everything kill the people they are the ones worshiping the idols but the animals he felt he could use them that is what human beings do superimposing their ideas upon yahuwah specific instructions okay now he didn't realize he was saving the livestock for the atonement of sin but he didn't realize he was committing a sin right so that is like you know doing much worse hoping that you're doing more now when um king when yahuwah saw this he was very angry with saul even though saul didn't do it to spite yahuwah the creator now yahuwah went to samuel in the middle of the night and he gave him a vision and the, um, an instruction to go dethrone saul and to kill the king of the amalekites whom saul had spared all right now if you read with me samuel first Samuel chapter 15 verse um seven then Saul, then Saul attacked the Amalekites all the way from Havilah to Shur, near the eastern border of Egypt. He took Agag. Agag was the king of the Amalekites. Excuse me. He took Agag, king of the Amalekites, alive. So he didn't kill him. He spared his life. And all his people he totally destroyed with a sword. But Saul and the army spared Agag, the king of the Amalekites, and the best of the sheep and the cattle, the fat calves, and the lambs, everything that was good. So they spent the livestock and maybe the gold and jewelries and money and trinkets. Now these, they were unwilling to destroy completely, but everything that was despised and weak, they totally destroyed. Okay, then the word of the of Yahuwah came to Samuel. I regret that I have made Saul king because he has turned away from me and has not carried out my instructions. Samuel was angry and he cried out to Yahuwah all that night. Okay, because the prophet feels the pain of Yahuwah. Early in the morning, Samuel got up and went to meet Saul. But he was told Saul had, you know, had gone to Camel. There he has set up a monument in his honor and has turned and gone and, ha and has turned and gone on down to Gilgal so you know he has he's kind of glorifying and celebrating his failure he didn't even realize he had failed Yahuwah he made, went and made a monument for himself okay so when Samuel reached where Saul was he said Yahuwah you know favor you sanctify you I have carried out 
Yahuwah's instructions, Saul was, you know, kind of giving a feedback to Samuel that he was happy he had obeyed Yahuwah's instructions. But Samuel shut him up and said, what then is the bleating of sheep in my ears? If really I've carried out Yahuwah's instructions, why are there sheep bleating in my ears? All the livestock he spared. What is the lowing of cattle that I hear? So answer, the soldiers brought them from the Amalekites. They spread the best of the sheep and the cattle to sacrifice to Yahuwah. But we totally destroyed the rest. So he thought he was doing right. Superimposing our ideas over Yahuwah's specific instructions. Enough, Samuel said to, to Saul. Let me tell you what Yahuwah said to me last night. Tell me, Saul replied. Samuel said, although you were once small in your own eyes, did you not become the head of the tribes of Israel? Because Yahuwah picked him up from nothing and exalted him to be a mighty king. Although you were once small in your own eyes, did you not become the head of the tribes of Israel? Yahuwah anointed you king over Israel, and he sent, and he sent you on a mission, saying, Go and completely destroy those wicked people, the Amalekites. Wage war against them until you have wiped them out. Why did you not obey Yahuwah? Why did you pounce on the plunder and do this evil in the, in the eyes of Yahuwah? And, Sa and Saul replied, But I did obey Yahuwah, Saul said. I went on the mission Yahuwah assigned me. I completely destroyed the Amalekites and brought back Agag the king. The soldiers took sheep and cattle from the plunder, the best of what was devoted to Yahuwah, in order to sacrifice them to Yahuwah, your Yahuwah at Gilgal. Like a, Gilgal is a place. But Samuel replied, does Yahuwah delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices? Because he owns all the livestock, he owns all the animals. So if you are disobeying him, sinning against him to offer an animal for the atonement of disobedience and sin, that is self-contradiction. You know, you're just like mocking him. Does Yahuwah delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as obeying Yahuwah? To obey is better than sacrifice and to heed is better than the fat of rams. For rebellion is like the sin of divination. That is what disobedience is. The sin of divination is like idol idolatry, worship of idols. For rebellion is like the sin of divination and arrogance like the evil of idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of Yahuwah, he has rejected you as king. Saul must have been shocked. Then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned, I have violated Yahuwah's command and your instructions. I was afraid of the men and so I gave in to them. So he gave in to the pressure from the soldiers who must have been saying, no, don't kill, don't destroy, don't waste this. So instead of obeying Yahuwah's instruction, that is what Yahuwah hates. Super transferring the obedience meant for him to another that that is you making him small that is you belittling him that is you humiliating that is you choosing another over him that was the sin of the man of yahuwah who was devoured by a lion he believed another over yahuwah that was the sin of eve in the garden of eden she believed the serpent over yahuwah's instruction that was the sin of 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 the sons of aaron even though they were under the influence of alcohol their you know, transfer their disobedience was seen as idolatry, as divination. Okay, so this is what Yahuwah hates when we superimpose our idea, believing we can give him a name. Who are you to give your creator a name? Do you know who owns the name in hellfire? In, in hell, do you know who owns the name in the spiritual realm? Do you know the demon that actually owns the name that you're calling upon? How can you give the person you worship a name? Giving the person you worship a name is giving the person power because the name is where the power lies, isn't it? Then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned. I have violated Yahuwah's command and your instructions. I was afraid of the men and so I gave in to them. Now I beg you, forgive me. Forgive my sin and come back with me so that I may worship Yahuwah. But Samuel said to him, I will not go back with you. You have rejected the word of Yahuwah and Yahuwah has rejected you as king over Israel. That was it. Even though he was sorry, apology does not make it okay. It's like somebody stabs you in the eye and says, I'm sorry. Does that make your eye okay? Does that do anything? Does it take away the pain? Does it make anything right? It doesn't. The consequences still follow. Okay? That is how Yahuwah, you know, is. You have been rejected as the king of Israel. And that was the end of Samuel. And not only did it end there that he was rejected as king, Yahuwah also sent an, an evil spirit to torment him. 
okay this is how yahuwah works do not add do not take away the trinity of 32 but samuel said to him um well and and but as, as samuel turned to leave Saul caught hold of the hem of his robe and they tore because was trying to pull him back samuel said to him yahuwah has torn the kingdom of israel from you today that is how serious it is he was trying to beg the rope tore because the rope tore he said yahuwah has torn the kingdom of israel from you today and has given it one of your to one of your neighbors to one better than you he who is the glory of israel does not lie or change his mind so yahuwah does not lie or change his mind the same thing he told us in malachi 3 6 i am yahuwah i do not change i do not lie whatever he says he must keep to it so if he tells you clearly do not add do not take away your the sins of the father is visited to the third generations unborn born so his word does not change he who is the glory of israel does not lie or change his mind for he is not a human being that he should change his mind so replied i have sinned but please honor me before the elders of my people do not shame me understand but please honor me before the elders of my people and before israel come back with me so that i may worship yahuwah your, your almighty so samuel went back with saul and saul worshiped yahuwah just to oblige him some respect so he's not totally mocked then Samuel said, Bring me Agar, king of the of the Amalekites. He still had to finish the instructions of Yahuwah. Agar came to him in chains, and he and he thought, Surely the bitterness of death is past. He was thinking, Oh, they've killed everything, we spared him, he's gonna be alive and be saved. But Samuel said, As your sword has made women childless, so will your mother be childless among women. Another curse. And Samuel put Agag to death before Yahuwah at Gilgal. He slit his throat. That is Samuel the prophet. Then Samuel left for Ramah, but Saul went up to his home in Gibeah of Saul. Until the day Samuel died, he did not go to see Saul again. He did not set eyes on him. You have to obey strictly whatever Yahuwah tells him. Okay? Though Samuel mourned for 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 Saul, but he did not have the permission of Yahuwah because that is, you know, how do I put it now? That is going against Yahuwah. He has placed a curse on somebody. Even though Samuel must have had a good relationship with Saul the king, he did not have the authorization to go sympathize with him. But even he did not see him, but he mourned for him from a distance. Okay, though Samuel mourned for Saul, and Yahuwah regretted that he had made Saul king over Israel. Okay, so you see, this is how serious it is. Yahuwah regretted that he had made Saul king over Israel. That was how David replaced Saul for that singular act. For that singular act. Ignorance is no excuse. Okay. Now also this is why he tells you clearly in, in um, Hosea 4, 6, my people perish for lack of knowledge. He's told us clearly that we ought to seek knowledge. We ought to seek him. We ought to, just the way we are pursuing our degrees and knowledge of Yahuwah is everything we need. You just imagine if all these degrees and all these, you know, big credentials and requirements and prerequisites were not there. We would not have, just like in the olden days, you grow up you start working you get an occupation that's it but you are studying the laws of yahuwah this is how yahuwah wants us to be have your attention on him and his ways and his laws he that the man favored is the man who delights in the ways of yahuwah my people perish for lack of knowledge that knowledge is not knowledge of doctorate degree professorship this knowledge of yeah my, my people perish for lack of knowledge telling you that there is knowledge for you to seek and your ignorance would not spare you from perishing your ignorance will not save you from perishing my people perish for lack of knowledge that is why even say even though satan has changed all the names changed all the scriptures changed and manipulated and corrupted everything the truth is still there. The evidence of the truth of the lies of Satan is still there because Yahuwah has not given Satan the authority to wipe everything. That is why the knowledge is still there. Daniel 12, 4, my, in the end, people will diligently seek and knowledge shall increase. My people perish for lack of knowledge. The knowledge is there. You have to seek it. You have to possess it. You have to imbibe it in you. You have to be imbued with it. Your, your lack of knowledge will not stop you from perishing. My people perish for lack of knowledge. Because you have forsaken my laws, I will also forsake your children. 
you see it is a chain reaction it goes on to the third and fourth generations why because yahuwah's laws yahuwah's word are his son people think that the messiah just came like two thousand years later to come save people no from the beginning in genesis whatever yahuwah says that is his son yahushua that is the messiah his word, the word the father speaks are his son. Because you have forsaken my laws, I also will forsake your children. His laws are his son. John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the word. The word was with Yahuwah. The word was Yahuwah. Okay? Now, Romans chapter 2 verse 12 also tells you that ignorance is no excuse. Alright? Romans chapter 2 verse 12 tells you that when the Gentiles sin, even though they never knew about Yahuwah or his laws, their ignorance is no excuse. They will still be destroyed for their sins. But you who have Yahuwah's laws, when you fail to obey the Torah, you will be judged by the Torah. Okay? So you can see, ignorance is no excuse. That is why it tells you, come out of her, my people. Come out of the ignorance. Come out of religion. Come out of idol worship. Come out of the straight path. Revelations 18.4, come out of her, my people. Matthew 7.13 tells you that, in the last days many will go through the wide path that wide is the gate that leads to destruction wide is the path that leads to eternal damnation and many will go through it okay so if your religion has if you, if you are practicing a religion every religion has a majority number that is why is in fulfillment of the prophecy because every religion worships god Hindus claim they are the oldest religion. Muslims claim they are the fastest growing religion. Christianity claim that all the uh, Islam emanated from, 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 from Christianity. And truly it is because Christianity brought Christ. Jesus Christ is the prophet of Islam. So they are all one. It's like the same parent. That is why the Pope tells them, no matter your religion, you are all children of God. They are all children of Satan. And Pope tells them, God is Satan. Jesus is the son of Satan. Do your research. The Encyclopedia Britannica, you're going to see so much truth. All the changes that were made, the records are still there. My people perish for lack of knowledge. The knowledge is still there. You need to seek it. Daniel chapter 12 verse 4. In the end, people are going to diligently seek and knowledge is going to increase. So you need to seek the knowledge. I was watching Michael Shabbat this evening and he was talking about um, grace and favor that the word grace is from a heathen mythology as well because when it if you read the scriptures it tells you that the mother of messiah who's from mariam whom people call mary today that it tells you clearly in the book of luke that she found favor with the creator yahuwah okay so when the angel came she said hail mariam full of favor now they've replaced grace with favor how do you know the proof of the meaning of the word grace these are all satanic just like the word amen is a demon so you are praying to god the, the satan you're praying to the son of satan jesus and you're ending the prayer with the name of a demon amen and you're praying for grace from god it is just satanic inclination satanic proclivity satanic satanism infested into people's you know people are infested with satanism it's just demonic everything about satan can only beget satan that is why yahushua said in john 14 15 you every bad fruit every bad tree can only produce bad fruit okay abide in me that you may bear good fruit because every bad tree will only produce bad fruit and every good tree can only produce good fruit okay so this is what is prophesied and this is what is happening today if you love me keep my commandments okay and he tells us clearly you cannot bear good fruit except you abide in me that is why everything about satan is demonic the church is from the daughter of helios the son deity so the church the the, the building you're going to is named after a demon the god you're worshiping there is satan the jesus you're praying through is the son of satan the amen at the end of the prayer is satan the grace you're asking for is satan the word blessed is from a pagan heathen mythology if you google the ancient um etymology of the word blessing you're asking god for blessing god is satan and the word blessing is, is to demonize you so it, it's the blessing is um is a heathen word for sprinkling blood on the altar for demon infestation please my people come out of her revelations 18 for come out of her my people seek knowledge if you do not have the time for your creator 
what are you alive for what can you possibly have time for what is the point of seeking the comfort and luxury of health and wealth and well-being what for what for what shall it profit you if you gain the whole world but you lose your soul nothing it's all vanity upon vanity vanity upon vanity come out of her my people Yahushua's guidance. I wish you all the best. Please stay safe. We're going to be grounding it up with closing prayer. We who dwell in the sacred place of Yahuwah, we shall abide under the shadow of Yahushua Almighty. I will say of you, my Yahuwah, you alone are my refuge and my fortress. My Yahuwah is only in you that I put my trust. For Yahuwah, you will deliver us from the snares of the foul and from the perilous pestilence. You will cover us with your great feathers and under your great wings we shall take refuge. My Yahuwah, your truth shall be our shield and our buckler will never be afraid of the terror by night nor of the arrow that flies by day nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday nor of the terror by night a thousand may fall at our sides ten thousand may fall at our right hands but it shall never come near us only with our eyes shall we look and see the recompense of the wicked because we have made you yahuwah our refuge even the most high yahuwah our dwelling place no evil shall ever befall us nor shall any plague come near our dwelling place for yahuwah almighty will give his angels charge over us to keep and to guard us in all of our ways in their holy hands they shall bear us up lest we dash our feet against stones we shall trample upon the lion and the adder the young lion and the serpent we shall trample underfoot because i have set my love upon yahuwah therefore yahuwah will deliver me yahuwah will set me on high because i have known his holy name i shall call upon yahuwah in trouble and he will answer me with long life yahuwah will satisfy me and he will show me his salvation in the mighty name of Yahushua HaMashiach, thank you. Thank you, friends. Thank you for your time. Please share the video, share the messages. All the best. Stay strong. Pray to the Holy Spirit. Acts 2, 17 tells you, In the last days I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. That is what is happening in these last days. The truth is coming to light. The Pope Francis is the beast in Revelations 13, 1 to 7. And he's professing all the blasphemies. He was given a mouthful of boasts and blasphemies. As prophesied is happening today. That is why the Pope Francis tells you, Do not have a relationship with the Messiah. Only believe what the church heathen temple tells you because he knows that the creator is going to be revealing the truth the holy spirit is going to be inspiring people to learn the true name of the true creator that is why isaiah 52 6 tells you that in the last days they will come to know my name they will come to know that it is i yahuwah speaking to them not god because we've been believing the wrong conceptions the wrong deceptions the lies of satan open your eyes you must get baptized ignorance is no excuse john 3 5 tells you verily verily i say unto you except a man be born of water and the spirit he cannot not will not not may not he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven okay born of water is baptism born of spirit is obedience to the commandments of yahuwah john 3 5 you must be baptized the right way in the name of the true trinity confess your sins make a resolution to follow the new path of life in compliance with romans chapter 6 verse 4 be fully submerged in the water arise to a new path of life and follow the commandments of yahuwah why because ignorance is no excuse all the best yahushua's guidance thank you so much <laughs>